Hello, welcome back to Gecko Tech and Gaming. I'm Kyle. So today I want to look at something a little bit different. Now when it comes to gaming, a lot of gamers are really concerned about response time with their devices. With gaming mice, click latency as well as sensor latency are a big deal and heavily impact whether someone may or may not want to choose uh, one mouse over another. Now with keyboards, we have a couple different options. Optical switches as well as mechanical switches. Mechanical switches have been around for a very long time and there's a ton of different options. Tactile, linear, as well as the clicky type of switches. And within each of those, there's just a huge amount of customizability that you can get with your keyboard. And for someone who's a typist or just for general use, that's more than enough. But gamers, for epic gamers, every little millisecond of latency makes a difference. How are you gonna beat that guy that's shooting at you if you don't have that two millisecond advantage? How could you possibly call in that airstrike if they have a faster mouse than you? And who's gonna go prone first if your keyboard is slower? And that is where optical keyboards come into play. Optical keyboards use a laser instead of a traditional metallic contact. That means that as soon as that laser is activated, it sends a signal to your computer, bada bing bada boom, you press the key. Compared to a traditional mechanical switch, you gain a few milliseconds in response time. Another thing to take into consideration is the durability of optical switches. Since there's less physical contact points, Optical switches are rated between like 70 million to 100 million presses. The issue right now is the most readily available optical keyboards are pre-mades, such as those from like Razer, Corsair, there's a few of them out there. But they all come with their own proprietary switch. Now there are keyboards that are hot swappable with optical switches, such as Epomaker, Royal Kludge, that are not super expensive, but they offer that option to use optical optical switches. The issue there, there's really only a few available options for those switches. So if you're someone that really likes a specific mechanical keyboard switch, like a Holy Panda or a Halo Clear, you're very limited with what you can do. You're kind of stuck with whatever Gateron is offering you. The other issue is that the PCBs for optical keyboard switches, since they use a laser instead of a metallic contact, regular mechanical switches are not compatible with optical keyboard PCBs. So if you have a collection of switches that you really like in your keyboard, but you want to move over to using an optical keyboard, you're kind of stuck, which is what I personally wanted to do. I do a lot of gaming, so I did want that low response time. That was something that was very tempting to me, but I do have a favorite switch that they don't make in an optical form. And for me, right now my personal favorite is a tactile switch from Duroc. They're the Duroc T1 Koalas. They're 67 gram springs, very tactile, super smooth. I believe it has a palm stem and the thing is just super smooth while still being very tactile. It's one of my personal favorite switches for typing. For me, the weight is just right for me to game as well. But I liked what the Epo Maker, I believe it was the SK64. Um, I really liked what that offered being an optical keyboard, but I really liked my old switches. When I pulled them apart to, to work on them a little bit, I noticed that really, they're pretty much the same. Other than the bottom housing, the top housing is the same. It's got the same little clamps on the sides to connect to the lower housing with a few minor differences. So I thought, why not just put them together? And it worked. <laughs> I combined the top housing and the stem from a regular mechanical switch, just slapped it into the bottom housing of an optical switch and it works great. And that's the keyboard I'm using right now. It's an SK64 with optical, they're optical Franken switches, I guess you could call them. But their bottom housing I got from the optical browns that came with it. But I took the top housing, the spring, and the stem 
from Duroc T1 Koalas. It feels just like it did as a mechanical switch. It does feel a little bit smoother compared to the regular mechanical T1 Koala, and I think it has something to do with the fact that it removes those metallic contacts, so there's less actual physical objects rubbing against each other, and it feels super smooth. Now one thing you will have to be aware of is that they have to be the same style of switch. If you look at a Kale style switch, on the sides, the little flanges that hold it to the bottom housing are different than Cherry style or Gateron style switches. If it's a Kale style switch, like a Halo Clear or something like that, it, it won't work. The top housing has to have the same little, um, the same mechanism on the sides to hold the top and bottom housing together. So any Gateron or Cherry style switches will fit in just fine. I've had it for roughly a year. Um, I haven't used it continuously for that whole year. I've been rotating it with one or two other keyboards here and there. I haven't run into any issues with it so far. It's been working great. No issues with actuation, no issues with smoothness. The switches haven't changed their feel at all that I can tell. It's really good. So this is just kind of a PSA. I just kind of wanted to share that because I was able to kind of fiddle around with it. And if you're someone who really appreciates that speed that an optical switch can give you over a mechanical switch which okay granted it's it's not a lot it's a few milliseconds like it's it's not a big deal but if you do appreciate those milliseconds you really want to push how fast that response time is then an optical keyboard is a good choice for you but if you're like me and you do really like to have that specific switch there's a specific switch you really like if you're like in the tactile gang or the linear gang or the clicky gang but if it's a cherry style switch or a gateron style switch that you like you can just pop those suckers into the bottom housing of an optical switch and you have yourself a switch that you like again i didn't try it with any other switches other than the duroc t1 koalas but i assume at least unless there's something different about the stem length at the bottom of the stem it should be compatible um i just wanted to share because a lot of the things that i've been reading online it seemed like a lot of people weren't really a fan of optical switches just because those options were so limited so this is really for that subset of typists who also really like to game and may want to have it in just one keyboard so what will help you a lot if you decide to modify your optical switches is getting one of these switch openers they they're made out of aluminum they help you pop open the switch a lot easier it's usually about eight to ten dollars if you buy it on amazon and just make sure it's for the right type if it's for kale it won't work you need to make sure it's a cherry style or a gateron style switch opener it's not necessarily for everybody. If you're someone who has modified a switch before or done any keyboard modding before, um, this will be right up your alley. It's really not a difficult modification to do. Even if you're someone who's never modified a keyboard, technically you don't even need a key, uh, keyboard switch opener. You can open it with just regular household tools. And you can go onto Reddit. There's a few different people who have used tweezers. There's a, there's a few different options. But having a switch opener makes it a lot easier and a lot faster, so you're not wasting as much time with trying to trying to finagle the switch to open up just right. So that's it for this video. I hope it helped you. Comment down below what type of switch that you'd want to do this modification with. Or if you've done this modification yourself, comment down below which one that you did it with. But that's it for today. So until next time, you guys stay safe, stay care. Thank you so much again for being here. I really appreciate you watching the video. And I hope it you know, gave you something fun to do or is informative, either way. But you guys take care and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Later.